Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, my name is Dallin Hawes and welcome back to this episode. I'm a financial planner serving you guys as federal employees, helping you guys retire comfortable and confident. Today we're talking about the five biggest regrets that I hear after talking with hundreds and thousands of federal employees one on one is what are the regrets that I hear as people retire of I wish I would have, right? So that you hopefully don't have to make the same mistakes. Right, and, and the core of these five regrets actually come from a book that I read that is incredible called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying by Bonnie, where you might have heard of it. It's an international bestseller, incredible book. And as I read it, I realized how much, of course, I, re I related with it, but also the people that I talk with all day long, the same regrets that I was hearing there were in the book. Right, so today we're going to talk about the five that were in there and how it applies to you. Now, today is not about the numbers of your retirement. It is not about that, right? It is more on what are you working towards? Why are you doing all this, right? And let me tell you this. You will never get the numbers right of your retirement until you get this right. Because the numbers mean nothing until you figure out what you're trying to work towards in reality. Before I dive into these five regrets, I wanted to share a, a couple experiences I've had recently that kind of sparked a lot of a lot of these feelings and sparked why I'm doing this video in the first place, right? So I had had a handful of clients, not just one, not just two, a handful of clients who have had an experience like this where they're planning for retirement and when they're within five years and they're really excited. They're really, really excited. Them and their spouse are excited to retire and all these things. And then something happens. I've had a client where their spouse gets a life-threatening disease. I've had a client whose spouse passes away. I've had a client where something to that effect, life-changing happens, and it changes everything. It changes their perspective. It changes their goals. It changes everything. Right? And I think it's a reminder, again, that's why I'm doing this video, is a reminder, okay, what's important? What do I really care about? And am I doing the things now that um, are pushing me closer to the life I want and not the life someone else wants, right? So without, <laughs> without further ado, we're gonna dive into the five regrets. Number one, number one, and again, these come from Bonnie Ware's book, so check out that book. If you just Google The Regrets of the Dying by Bonnie Ware, it'll pop right up. So, number one is I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life others expected of me, right? There's always a million expectations on us, whether it's from our parents, whether it's from our friends, whether it's from our spouse, whether it's from our neighbors, right? Our bosses, whatever. There's so many expectations that we try to conform ourselves into during our life, right? And one of the biggest regrets I hear all the time is, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I would have just done the things I wanted to do before my health went bad. Because once we lose our health, our mobility, our energy, it's too late to do a lot of things. It's not too late for everything, but it's too late for a lot of things. So. Obviously, I'm not saying you should retire tomorrow, right? I'm not saying that. I'm saying, okay, what's important to you? And don't let your dreams get swept under the rug because you're living up to the expectations of others that really aren't important to you, right? That's number one. Number two is I wish I hadn't worked so hard, right? Now, I talk with a lot of federal employees and I have never heard regret of having too much in the TSP. I haven't heard that, right? People love having too much in the TSP. But what I have heard is that people regret being in positions or jobs where they miss their children's childhood, where they miss family events, right? Where they're not able to have the lifestyle they want because of their work, right? And some people love their work and I love my work, right? And it's not a bad thing. Work, work can be a wonderful thing. But what does that mean for you, right? What does that mean for you? Obviously, you want to be prepared for retirement. Obviously, right? But what is most crucial? 
for you? What is most important to you? Um, and don't miss those things. Don't miss those things. Number three is, I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. Now, I know this sounds kind of hippy-dippy, right? But hang with me here, right? Often, we don't express what we're actually thinking, feeling, or want with the people we love, with our bosses, whatever. We're afraid to express what we actually want, and therefore, we settle for mediocre, right? Our life becomes mediocre. And that's what we settle for because we don't have the courage to stand and say, hey, you know, this is what I'm, this is what I want. This is what I'm trying to do, right? Life, life is short. Okay. Number four, I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends, right? I think all of us can be guilty of, uh, to some degree of life gets busy. Life gets busy. Things move fast, and it's so easy to let old friendships slip away, right? And then come retirement, come whenever, hey, the friendships are gone, right? They're gone. And so to be able to keep those friendships along the way, whether it's family, friends, whatever, crucial, crucial. Number five, I wish I had let myself be happier, right? And... I think there comes a point in everybody's life when it's like, oh, this whole happiness thing is a choice. It's a choice. And I could decide to be happy while I'm working, when I'm tired, whenever, right? That's my choice. And I'm never going to arrive even when I retire. Now I see a lot of people retire. And while not having to work is an amazing thing that they love, it doesn't change people's happiness. Unless, of course... They're maybe doing things that they love, where they fill their life with great things and they choose, like, okay, no, I'm, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to enjoy this. And again, this may all sound so hippy-dippy, but the reason I'm bringing it up is to remind us all to be conscious about the choices we're making and the effects it's going to have on, on your life and your retirement, right? Your life now and in retirement. Because we shouldn't live our life now for one day, you'll be retired, so therefore, it'll be worth it at that point, right? Live life for now, but also for the future, right? I think these points don't make retirement planning less important. I think they, it makes it more important. Okay, live your life in a way so that you can be happy now and in the future, right? Crucial, crucial, crucial. Now, if there's any of these five regrets that you relate to, you know someone recently, like, wow, they express this, put in the comments below, share with each other, and we will all learn and get better and improve and um, improve together. So I hope that was helpful. Have an incredible rest of your day, and we'll talk soon.